train hot dog, the uh, podcast where I talk to myself on a train. Today we're going to be talking about time travel and the various theories that abound for how time travel works. Um, which is to say, the different models of time travels used in fiction. I'm pretty sure someone on Wikipedia has enumerated this already, so let's search Wikipedia time travel models. Mm, tone travel, time, time travel models. Time travel in fiction, that seems plausible. Time travel, sharing time travel, see also. Uh, time travel can be the central theme of the plot, or merely a plot device to set the story in motion. Whereas the theme of time travel may be restricted in hard science fiction, which would examine the causes and effects of time travel paradoxes, the theme may be allowed in soft science fiction, fantasy, and science fantasy, which may ignore these aspects and focus on the fantastic wonders and adventures. Unreliable source? John Redmond regards the time travel motif as providing a necessary distancing effect which can allow fiction to address contemporary issues in metaphorical ways and valuable for providing a view of history where every person is significant. Early stories featuring time travel, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, in ancient Hindu mythology, the Mahabharata, written around 700 BC, mentions the, mentions the story of the King Rev- Revaita who travels to a different world to meet the creator, Brahma. The king is shocked to learn that many ages have passed when he returns to Earth. It sounds like time traveling by time passing. Uh, play NO7603, written by the Dana Norwegian poet Johan Hermann Wessel, or something. 1781, the two main characters have moved to the future, 7603, by a good fairy. Aw, oh, thanks, fairy. Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur Court. Alright, we don't need to list. Um, list of time travel science fiction. List of games. Temporal paradox. Time viewer. Time viewer is a fictional device which can display events occurring in another time, either the past or more or less coming in the future. Oh, like snow glass. Alright, maybe there isn't something like this on Wikipedia. Let's just search for time travel models. Modeling time travel in fiction. Here we go. QNTM.org slash models. Time travel is a subject of great interest to me, not the actual, you know, nuts and bolts physics of it, but the various possible models that can be imagined. I've written a variety of fiction based around these. The most important thing I find when coming up with a new theory is to try to trip up in every way imaginable and make sure it still works. Trip it up in every way imaginable and make sure it still works. Here I go with every model of time travel I can think of. Time travel is impossible. By far the most likely of all the various possibilities, there are no time travelers because it is impossible to travel through time. Time is an illusion, perhaps, not even a proper dimension. Space-time is a rigid crystal with worms, us. Oh, thanks, guy. Thanks for calling us worms. I'm not a worm. Maybe you're a worm. Stuck inside, never changing. Hey, maybe you don't change. Maybe you're stuck inside. This is also by far the dullest time travel model and implicitly used in almost every phase of fiction ever ever written. Yeah, that's... That's uh, every story I can think of has a time travel model where time travel is impossible. Time is a loop. The postulation that time is a loop, that is, after the universe ends in a big crunch, it goes back to the original Big Bang and starts all over again exactly the same, essentially doesn't change the fact that time travel is impossible. There's nothing coherent can actually survive the crunch and bang. Nothing can, can actually go all the way around the loop and be present in its own path. Fixed history model. 
the states of time travel is possible. There is only one timeline. History cannot be changed. Anytime you try to change history, it will turn out you were supposed to make the change all along. This model assumes it allows individuals to travel back in time to their own past light cone. I like, I love that term, light cone. Allows individuals to interfere with their own past and thus necessarily includes some level of predestination paradox. For example, okay, I'm... Predestin a causal loop is a paradox of time travel that occurs in a later future event is the cause of an earlier past event through some sort of time travel. The past event is then partly or entirely the cause of the future event, which is the past event's cause. Okay, yeah. And you know what? Let's look up light cone while we're at it. Light coffee? Oh, good. Light cone. Uh, a light cone is the path that a flash of light emanating from a single event localized to a single point in space and a single moment of time and traveling in all directions would take through space-time. If we imagine the light confined to a two-dimensional plane, the light from the flash spreads out in a circle after the event E occurs, and if we graph the growing circle with a vertical axis on the graph re representing time, the result is a cone known as the future light cone. The past light cone behaves like the future light cone in reverse, a circle which contracts this radia in radius at the speed of light until it can register to a point at the exact position in the time of event, event E. So in reality, there, in reality, there are three space dimensions, so the light would actually form an expanding or contracting sphere in 3D space rather than a circle in 2D, and the light cone would actually be a four-dimensional version of it whose cross-sections form 3D spheres, analogous to the normal three-dimensional cone whose light cross-sections form 3D circles, but the concept is easier to visualize with the number of spatial dimensions reduced from 3 to 2. So what is the... There's got to be a name for a 4D cone. Someone has to have named that. In special relativity, a light cone is the surface describing the temporal evolution of a flash of light in Minkowski space-time. Minkowski. In mathematical physics, Minkowski space, Minkowski space-time, or flat space-time is the mathematical space setting in which Einstein's theory of a special relativity is most conveniently formulated. Uh, all right. What do you call call a four D cone? Hypercone, of course. We're just gonna search for hypercone hyper cone to make sure that that's actually what you call it. In geometry, oh nice, there's a projection of a hypercone. It's complete nonsense and it's projected into 2D space. In geometry, a hypercone is a figure in the four dimensional Euclidean space represented by the equation x squared plus y squared plus 2z squared minus w squared equals zero. Oh god, I don't know if that maps to a <sighs> the equivalent of a cone or not. Uh, it is named spherical cone because it intersections with hyperplanes perpendicular to the W axis or spheres. Okay, that's definitely a 4D cone. Okay, back to back to the lecture at hand. Um, light cones. Ah, oh, yes, I was talking about the predestination paradox. For example, somebody comes from the future and tells you to get into the time machine. You get into the time machine, you go back to the past, you tell your past self to get into the time machine. It's also entirely possible for universes employing this model to include causal loops, ideas and objects which have no origin point. The majority of stories involving time travel make use of this very simple model. The major difference within stories is how the universe resists changes to the timeline. For example, if you go back in time to try to kill Hitler or, Hitler or your own grandfather, something, something somehow will stop you. But how? There are four ways I can think of, four sub-models of time travel. The timeline is preserved through dumb luck. This is a favorite. It's used with varying degrees of seriousness in 12 Monkeys, Futurama, Timeline, and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 
timeline is actively protected by an intelligence of some kind. The degree of interaction can vary here. We can have anything from human intelligences who send things or people back in time who become because historical records say that was what happened. Bill and Ted's, ex Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, The Terminator to occasionally cosmic police forces which actually have to go back in time after rogue time travelers to stop them from wrecking the timeline. DC comic book universe, Doctor Who. But in some cases it's dangerous to put fiction under the heading of history can never be changed just because history never is changed. Just because the timeline is always, is always preserved doesn't mean it's impossible for the timeline to be altered. Indeed, if it really was impossible to change history, such active preservation would be completely unnecessary. The timeline is preserved by quantum. Another possibility is detailed in Stephen Baxter's book Time, in which it seems that time travel involves sending back, back and forth time, through time with quantum packets of information, which alter history multiple times in a kind of feedback loop until the universe settles into a stable structure in which the instance of time travel is completely internally consistent. Time travel isn't always possible. Alternatively, one may have a universe which only allows time travel in certain instances of time, time and space, and only allows a certain object, a single certain object to travel through time at each instant. This means the time machine will only work at predetermined points in time and will be completely non-functional the rest of the time, or if the wrong things in the machine. In this case, the universe is kind of like an office building with time being height. The finite number of elevator shafts leading between certain floors symbolizing individual instances of time travel. You can't go back in time unless it's predetermined that you will, and everything will work out fine. Even if you try, you'll fail. This model is used approximately in time bandits. It is a recognized, this is a recognized possible variant on, on every valid time travel model. For example, it may be that there are no time travels because no one has built a receive, receiving station to accept an incoming time travel from the future yet, or because there is a blockade across space-time at some future point in time, across which time travelers are simply unable to pass. Malleable, malleable history model. This is the model which is used with, with, with slight customizations in Back to the Future movies in Star Trek. There's only one timeline. History is a resilient beast. You can travel back in time and alter history slightly, but generally you are free to wander around. As long as you don't do anything hugely anachronistic and get away with get away with it and return to the future safely. However, there are certain points in history with a relatively large historical imperative, events which are almost fated to happen. If you alter these, you can radically, radically affect the future. The death of Ed Keeler, the point where Marty's dad first meets his future wife, first contact. Mess these up, and future history will jump onto a very different track. But here's the important thing: you can restore history to the right track if you set everything approximately straight. This doesn't actually make a whole lot of logical sense. Scientific impartiality necessitates that every point in history be as significant as every other point, and chaos theory dictates that small changes to a highly complicated Earth's weather system can result in massive changes in the long term. Over the course of a generation, even if you reset everything to approximately back to how they're supposed to be, Marty's future parents meet up a little later than usual, hey ho, the changes will add up again. Sooner or later, not to put too fine a point on it, different children will be born to the same parents, and after only a generation or two, the whole world will be run, being run by different people, and thus the whole world will run differently. Of course, intuitively, this is a different concept for us, non scientifically minded to grasp, but it's easy to see why this isn't the case in these two important continuities. Important submodels, Back to the Future. Back to the Future contains elements which make relatively little scientific sense. For one thing, alterations to the timeline take time to propagate. For example, old Biff Tannen goes back in time from 2015 to 1955 and changes history so that 1985 becomes dark and nasty. But then he returns to the good 2015, which somehow hasn't been erased yet. Uh, and changes don't, don't propagate fully either. Marty partially disappears, but there's no way he could somehow be partially born. And changes don't change things consistently. Marty's photo of Doc's gravestone changes to a photo of a blank gravestone. Then a photo of just random grass. So why doesn't the photo disappear completely? Why would Mar Marty have taken a photo of nothing? And why, for that matter, does he remember what the gravestone used to say when the photo doesn't? Shouldn't his mind also change? 
consistent model to explain Back to the Future, and it's indeed could probably be constructed, but not easily. Most of these inconsistencies, however, are dramatic elements more than anything else. Star Trek has run long enough to include examples of all kinds of other models of time travel, as well as plenty of crazy rubbish which makes no sense. The model given here is approximately correct, but there are technicalities. Sensitive history model. This is the version of malleable future model which incorporates the cast theory elements I mentioned above. There's only one timeline. Anytime you go back in time, you change history. You can never set everything back perfectly back the way it was. How big a problem this, this is depends on how back, far back in time you go. If you go back before you were born and change history enough that you were never born, or worse, somebody else was born in your place, your sibling by most definitions, you're in trouble. But if you go back five minutes, who cares? Of course, there are bigger issues here. What happens if you go back and stop yourself from getting in the time, in the time machine? It's a common misconception that this would cause a paradox. There is no such thing as a paradox. You can't exist. They can't exist by definition. And since you, just before getting into your time machine, didn't meet anybody right beforehand, this means the person you're looking at cannot be your past self. When you stop them from getting in the time machine, there will be no problem, except that now there's two of you, one of whom just appeared out of thin air. This violates the laws of conservation of mass energy, but that's a small, that's a small price to pay for working time travel. This model is used in Schlock Mercenary. Okay, I'm clicking on that. Schlock, oh, it's a, it's a webcomic. Pause for thought. Why sing? Why am I... Okay, I'm not sure we're going to get through all these models. How long is this page? This is like almost like less than halfway done. Let's, let's, let's go back to the table of contents here. Why single modifi his modifiable history models don't work? Multiple history model primer, time loops, daybreak, groundhog. I have to read all these. Fuck. We'll see how far we can get. The major problem with both the malleable and, and sensitive, his, sensitive history models is where are all the time travelers? Suppose you get in the time machine and go back in time. The universe alters itself, starting from your re-entry point with, appear with you appearing instead of saying nothing happening. What, ma what makes you and perception special? What makes this new universe one in which you appear in the mid-air mid out of nowhere but nobody else? Theoretically, anybody could appear out of space at any time, having traveled back from some hypothetical previous timeline. What stops them? The answer, nothing really, unless time travel is really, really hard. This means that basic history in any fictional universe which utilizes these models should be absolutely crammed to the gills with timelines. The entire universe is horrifyingly unstable. Also, how do changes occur? For a timeline to initially be like this, but then change to be like that, something, must, something very like time must have passed. Somewhere along the secondary time axis, there's an initial timeline, and further along there's the timeline we're, we're in now. But we just said there's only one timeline, when clearly there are at least two. So from the standpoint of a fiction writer, these models are problematic, or at least contradictory. But we can solve these issues with the following multiple history model. This is the simplest consistent model of time travel I could devise, which allows history to change, but also explain the lack of time travelers. And you can go back in time whenever you like. Every time you go back in time, you create an entirely new timeline. If you go forwards in time, you stay in your current timeline. This means you can go back in time and change history easily, but that act creates a new and different timeline. You can never return to the timeline where you originally started, but just because because going forwards in time just leaves you in the timeline two in timeline two and going backwards in time a second attempt would leave you in, in a third timeline. The net effect in your home timeline is that you've simply disappeared forever. If you go back in time to kill Hitler, you don't undo the Second World War, but it stays happened. You simply give everyone in everybody involved the chance to die all over again. This is a model of time travel, which I described in my story Be Here Now, and explored very thoroughly in later Ed stories. Be Here Now, is that a thing I should know? Well, it's a link on QTMN, QTM, QNTM.org, so maybe, I don't know. Several other people have invented it independently, and several other stories can fit alongside it, which is logical since it is the second simplest wholly consistent model. Nominally, this results in finite but large timelines running parallel with each other as people go back in time over and over and create more timelines. 
However, it could also be that the timeline simply is to run sequentially one after the other. After the original universe ends, the first universe that was created through time travel starts over right away, and so on until they're all done. Equally, it could be that when the original timeline the original timeline simply ceases to exist, the time travelers depart backwards in time. In this case, it's more as if time travelers are unwinding the universe back to some earlier state. And you know, I forgot to do writer mail. Okay. Um. Uh, let me do that right now. How do I? I haven't done this in like a week, so I need to search. Okay. Here's a writer mail uh, from the 321 area code. That's the Space Coast. That's exciting. Uh, this writer writes, Hey, it's Summer from the Space Coast. Hey, my wife lost her phone on the, is on the train. Could you check for me? Thanks. Enjoying the pot care. Good job. Yeah, I'll go check. I'll go, I'll just wander the train and, ch and look for, look for this phone while I finish this podcast. Um. And here's another rider mail from the 510 area code. That's, uh, the Bay Area. I, I don't know who this person is, though I don't recognize the number. This rider writes, I don't understand. Well, I don't understand either, rider. So... We're in the same boat. It's exciting. Um, you know, that's actually all the time we have. Um, sorry I didn't find your phone, 321. Uh, but... Um, I'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good, uh, have a good ride.